Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert. And today, we're going to be analyzing Sarah Boone. She's otherwise known as the suitcase murderer. In 2020, her boyfriend, Jorge Torres Jr., was put in a suitcase, although the circumstances to which that happened are still somewhat unclear. She claims they were playing a game of hide-and-seek. She went to bed, and the next morning he had passed away. Since then, video was found by police that showed that she knew he wasn't able to breathe. He was asking for help. He was trapped in the suitcase. And because of that, she's being charged with second-degree murder. Today, we're going to be watching her interrogation and the initial police response to the emergency call the day he passed away. I wanted to remind you guys that if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And I also wanted to let you know that I got the idea from this video from one of the comments. So please keep commenting suggestions and ideas. I'm keeping track of all of them, and I'm going to be doing them all over time. All right, let's get started. A contusion. So he had some injuries to his left shoulder. Um, he had um, he had a cut near his like lip. We could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on. Now, typically, this is a sign of cooperation or compliance. Oftentimes, when people see this, they associate it with people being honest. We're leaving our body vulnerable. We've got our hands out. Now, that may not be the case for her, and I'll explain why. If you practice something enough, if there are certain questions you know you're going to lie about and you've practiced it enough, you can use this kind of body language to seem more honest. It's possible she's telling the truth. It's also very possible that this is something she has thought about over and over again, and she's able to engage in more confident body language temporarily. Let's watch what happens as soon as she's done. I <coughs> also, too, I, he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall okay. or the hall tree. Okay. So I. Okay. I don't, what about the scratches? So let's watch this interaction again. I'm going to show you what I think is possibly true, what's rehearsed, and what is less likely to be true. Well, so this, I think, is rehearsed. Okay. I, <coughs> also, too, I, he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall. Or and those things, I don't think she believes that's where those bruises came from. Right now, she's not speaking as openly as co and as confidently. The hall tree? So okay. I. But then, once again, hands up to say, hey, don't look at me about this. This is not my fault. Because she, this is something she is very certain that she wants to get across. Okay. I don't, what about the scratches? Oh, gosh. Last my week? understanding, he was there like last Tuesday. Last, I don't know if it was Tuesday. Now you'll notice the detective on the right. He's leaning forward. This is a way to, to seem friendlier. Obviously, they're asking her questions. Obviously, they don't sound especially friendly. But people feel closer to you when you lean forward. So there is, he's using his body language as they are asking her questions. But yes, he was there last week, so. Okay. <coughs> I have no idea, and I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I. So as they're continuing to talk about the injuries that he sustained, she is starting to change her body language a little bit. She's doing this, the, the, we call the steepling. So this is when we want to seem like an expert. When we really want someone to believe us about something, we sometimes do this. And she's doing that right now because I don't think she expected them to come across as though they didn't believe everything that she's saying. So she's feeling desperate. You have to believe me at this point. And so she really wants to come across as an authority. She's also got her feet crossed under her chair, which we oftentimes associate with people trying to hide something. So let's keep watching for that. I have no idea. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We, I think he gets overwhelmed. And then it's like, the next thing I know, he's drinking. So it's like, oh, man. I know where this is going to go, so I'm going to go upstairs and read a book, or I'm going to go for a bike ride, or I'm going to do... So now she's trying to establish that she goes upstairs when she's upset, and that's something that's going to come up over and over again, and for good reason. There's something else where I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously... So she's probably not doing herself any favors by saying that she is so good and so organized considering she claims that she accidentally forgot and left him in a suitcase. So it's probably not a smart thing to say. Prior that I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but had smoke coming. We're having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I so she, not only is she saying she, she doesn't get drunk, she can't is what she's claiming. So let's keep watching. Number one. I do not want to get drunk. Now she's doing this again. She is desperate for them to believe this fact. 
I don't like being non complimentous having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just saying, you're you're making it sound like, uh, you know, but you guys were both sober on Sunday, to your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out, I just fell asleep. So now it's kind of like, what? So right now they're talking about alcohol use, and you're seeing her leaning forward, she's closing her mouth, for some reason, there's things about this that she doesn't want to say. I've talked about this before. Sometimes people are just doing it to wet their lips. But oftentimes, when people do this, it's because they're trying not to say something. But she's also leaning forward because she wants to feel closer to these detectives because she really is getting desperate for them to believe the things that she says. What is it? Is, were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. it got physical? No. But now you're seeing her body go back a lot, right? So she said that, and that made her pull back. When we see people's bodies go back physically, that's them trying to create distance. She really does not like this idea. Oh, or is it... Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. Sleep around 12.30ish, but those are the only times I have. So I have four and I have midnight, so there's a big gap. So I'm just curious, like... So what we see with her is that there are certain things, as I said before, that I believe are very rehearsed. That she went upstairs to fall asleep, or fell asleep, all of those things, that we didn't fight. There's certain things that she has said to herself over and over again. And I guess she hadn't really given a lot of detailed thought about how to explain what happened between 4 and midnight, which is why you see that visceral reaction when she realizes she's going to have to talk about that time period. If you recall when you went upstairs to hide in the shower, or... Like when we started to play, hide mm -hmm. and seek. I would <coughs> never do that. You would never zip them up in a suitcase? Uh, well, I, mean, I mean, we were playing. No, I know. So she didn't answer the question. She's trying to, once again, say the things that she's rehearsed. We were playing. I fell asleep. This is this and this and this. That but time, I was, to your recollection, no videos on Sunday. Not that I'm aware of. So this, I think, is actually true. When they ask if she remembers taking any videos, she says, not that I'm aware of. And this is an area where they're going to catch her by surprise, and then you're going to see the body language and her behavior change. Okay. I mean, I like, I guess I thought I, I maybe it's like a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs, and George and have them dancing, but I mean. No, it's just the way you said it. You guys you are scaring me. So you can see her rubbing her forehead like this. We do this to pacify ourselves. When we're feeling stressed, we oftentimes see these people rubbing their forehead. And at this point, she's for the first time really starting to understand the seriousness of the questions the detectives are asking. That they can't just take her word for things. That they actually have a video of her talking to him while he's in the suitcase. It seems She seems quite inebriated in this video. So I'm thinking that she's only now just starting to remember that she even took it. I would really believe that she didn't know that video was on there. Do I have to watch this? All right, so she just leaned back. Do I have to watch this? She's trying to create distance between them. She is now feeling distinctly more uncomfortable. And as the moment grows closer, she may be remembering little bits of what she said or may have a better idea of this video. As I said, I, I really imagine that she would have deleted this video if she remembered making it. So I'm thinking that she might just remember bits of it because she sounds quite intoxicated on the video. I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. All right, and now she's touching her lips. We oftentimes associate this with doubt and uncertainty. Aside from the fact it can have a pacifying effect and help us feel calmer, she is now starting to feel more uncertainty about how this is going. She's not so sure that she's going to get through this the way that she wants to. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone, and you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah, we're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long. Two minutes. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> For everything you've done to me. Oh. You. Oh. Your voice. Stupid. So. It's my name. Don't wear it up. We're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down. So guys, this is killing me right now. She's trying to garner their sympathy. She's trying to say, hey, you need to care about how I feel about this. 
And so I think that she misreads the situation in that sense as though the detectives are going to go, okay, well, we'll let up since this is making you uncomfortable. But that seems to be maybe something that she's done before. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Once again, my plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. That's one of her key phrases. She says it over and over again. And she says it with confidence because I believe that is a practiced phrase. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional love. No, I'm just showing you, I'm just telling you what we see and what we've heard from the other I video. Understand. Now, another thing that you see is she looks very intently at times at the investigators. So she'll look at them strongly and that is looking for acceptance. Once again, she's trying to be convincing, and then she'll look at them for acceptance to make sure you are accepting what I'm telling you, right? Because you have to, because this is the way things are going to be, because I'm not going to get in trouble for this. I understand. He's begging to let, for you to let him out. You sound, you're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end it sounds kind of like a, no, it's not malicious. It's not malicious. Then what is that? And now she's starting to get hostile because she knows how much trouble she's going to get in. So it goes from funny to no longer funny, but I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was, like, panicky. Like, I didn't, I, so pushing up on a suitcase. So now, where you, earlier you were seeing her be very expressive and very animated. Now it's a lot more pacifying behaviors, touching her neck, trying to calm down. Now, as she's starting to realize that this is going very badly, now she wants to calm herself down rather than try to make a convincing and compelling case. She's trying to be cool under pressure. He's saying, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So what? You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. Now, one thing that we also see is that when people do palms out but hands up, that is often a very strong indicator of lying. Palms open and down, not always, but palms open and up oftentimes indicates insecurity and lying. Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. Just because I went upstairs and... Just you because you're drunk doesn't you mean that, that you... Times that you were not drunk. You said that you had your... My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to... Once again, this is the point that she has repeated to herself, I'm guessing, once again, this is speculative, but I believe she has repeated this to herself over and over again. My plan was not to go upstairs. My plan was not to go upstairs. And so you see her saying this, and once again, you see the fingers together. You have to believe this. He'll be up here any minute. But, but you again. willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get My plan wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs, and then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think? Once again, I went upstairs and fell asleep. This shows a lot less security about this answer. Now she's starting to feel less confident of it. The palms open, hands up. She's feeling less confident about how this is going. He's asking to come out. He can't I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> well, I thought... So she's gone, once again, from a... I don't want to say friendly tone necessarily, but from a, a a tone that is more comfortable to getting hostile. Because once again, I think that her belief is, you cannot do this to me. You cannot pin this on me. I refuse it. So if she gets angry, that maybe somehow that's going to help her. Obviously it won't, but it seems to be that, that that's what's going on in her head. He's asking to come out. He I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> Explained itself. It really, truly does. Do you don't think that I have thought about that? <coughs> thought about the video or thought about... But no, again. She said thought about the video. She knows this video is really bad news for her, so we, you'll see the body language for her leaning back when she asked her that. Watch this again. Explained itself. It really, truly does. Do you don't think that I have thought about <coughs> that? <coughs> thought about the video or thought about... But no, again. Please. So you all are assuming that it's like, oh good, I got him in there, now I'm going to go to sleep? Is that what you all are assuming? Well, it's not an assumption when that's what you told us that happened. That's what mm -hmm. happened. And the video... And she's posing questions to them. She really is quite arrogant, actually. He can get out on his own. Yes. But the video shows that he cannot get out on his own. But, I, but when I unzipped it, I unzipped it with one finger. From the outside. But it had the hole in it. 
This is similar, actually, to Lori Vallow's interview. If you've seen that video that I did, The Doomsday Mom, where I talk about her and a shooting, she was using one hand and she kept illustrating over and over again because she wanted and insisted upon people believing her. And the less confidence she had, the less animated she was, the more she would use just one hand to talk. And she's doing something similar right now. Her left hand is sitting. She's trying to use her right hand to illustrate this. So she's trying to be emphatic, but also this may not be true. There's something about this that she's not confident when she's saying. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, horrific. I believe that she's referring to the interview process that's horrific, actually, and not the situation. And I think the detectives are referring to the situation, and I think that they know that. But, but in one video. Well, in between those two videos. Between those two videos? Minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, what was the so, question again? When he's begging for his life, telling you he can't <laughs> breathe, let me out, just let him out. What are you trying to now, this is not her leaning forward in order to seem closer. It seems that she's trying to brace herself because she's getting so upset. It looks like she's got a lot of tension, and she's just trying to hold it together right now. I don't. So now she's starting to slouch. Slouching is often something we see with people that are guilty or people that are lying. Obviously, she hasn't had a trial yet. I can't say that she's guilty specifically, but it's something that's often seen there. There was obviously I, something in your head that you were thinking of when he was asking to let you, be let out, and you're like, no, Again, it's no. the boy calling wolf. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I have to live without him now. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. Punishment in itself. So at this point, we skipped a good chunk of time because it, it got pretty circular. They asked a lot of the same questions. She showed a lot of the same body language. But now she's saying that living without him is going to be punishment enough. I think that this is her insistence that this is her punishment. She she messed up. Her punishment is that he's passed, and that they can't do anything else. That really does seem to be her position. Not intentionally. We understand that. She's still there. Well, we Someone needs to call that. Brian, please. Okay. Or can I not make a phone call? <laughs> you so now we're going to see Sarah Boone interacting with police after the emergency call was made. You're going to see some interesting inconsistencies between her interview from a couple of days later that we showed first and when she was initially on the scene. Um, what's going on? I just got here, so fill me in. No problem. We're having a good time with one another, but we're drinking. We had a bottle of wine last night. Okay. So then it's like, you're like, I'm going to So you can already see, she said she had a bottle of wine last night. Now, in the other video, she had said, that she can't have more than two or three drinks. So there's already things that we're seeing that are demonstrably false. They decided to play hide and seek, right? Okay. And then she said they decided to play hide and seek. This part still confuses me. So he gets in the suitcase, okay? There's something about that that just makes no sense. So I don't know why that's what she chose, that they were playing hide and seek, uh, I, I, but it's it doesn't make any sense to me and I don't see how that's believable. Let's just watch that interaction again. We had a good time with one another, but we're drinking. We had a bottle of wine last night. Okay. Wow. So then it's like we decided to play hide and seek, right? Okay. So he gets in the suitcase. Okay. Who is this guy? That's my ex. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. No. She's obviously a bit rattled, but she seems relatively calm. And I'm going to co contrast that with something in a second. So just keep in mind the way that she's been talking. I didn't know what to do. Okay. So then he came over here. Here, let's talk. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. So when she's talking about him, she's not getting upset that he's dead, it doesn't sound like. I mean, she's not. I know everybody reacts differently. We've talked about this in other videos. In crisis situations, there's not really a right or wrong way to react. But... Talking about him is not upsetting her. What's upsetting her is the idea that she fell asleep. She gets upset when she talks about things that she did. I think that the the, the fear of her getting in trouble is is more problematic for her than the fact that this guy has passed away. When I found him. Before you called? Yes! Where did he live at? Uh, right down the street. Okay. So you were playing and who zipped him up? And I did, okay. but then I fell asleep. Okay, okay, stop. She's more animated about the idea of falling asleep than basically anything else at this point. You're okay. I don't, I wouldn't go first. Like, I'm, I'm going like, here, I want you to sit down because I don't want you passing out. This is probably a lot for you to deal with, I need right? Sit, sit, sit. I don't want water. It's something similar to what you saw when you saw her with the detectives. She needs a lot of control. She is very demanding of other people. And so she's getting very frustrated already that this person will not allow her to get a drink. 
or is not just letting her go go in and get the drink and do what she wants. I can get you some water, okay? Just I want you not on your seat because yeah, I don't want you passing out on me. I'm forgetting that he was so in you the suitcase. Were playing the hide and go yes. seat. And at some point you put him in the suitcase? No, he got in the suitcase. So okay. he thought it would be funny to be put in the suitcase. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to joke with you and I'll zip you up and make so she's contradicting herself immediately, now that that's any shock. She's saying they played hide-and-seek, and then she said it would be funny to zip him up in the suitcase. So like, I, I don't really understand that. But, you know, obviously, she's having a hard time keeping all of the details of this straight. I can, you know, squirm a little bit, whatever it is. But then I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I fell asleep. Where was the suitcase? Right where it is. In it. Right down there? Yes. Upstairs. In your bedroom? Yes. Okay. Totally forgetting that he was in the suitcase still. Okay. As I talked about before, fingertips to lips, that suggests doubt and insecurity. So if there's any part of all of the questions that she's getting asked that I pay attention to, this is it right here. And then you came back downstairs. This morning? Or this afternoon, yes, when I got up. Park, what time? 12, 30-ish. I was awake. So the time that she got up, once again, she's comfortable talking about that. There's that She doesn't seem to see any issue about the time she got up today. But when we go back to the time that she she fell asleep, there's got to be more to that than we know. But I totally forgot that he was in the suitcase. And, but um, like, I don't, like, this was totally, like, not intentional. Like, that's what I'm scared about too, like. So <laughs> I talked about the palms up, that, that feeling insecure and doubtful about things. And that's what we're seeing as she's talking about, it was unintentional, she's putting her hands up. You know, whether or not it was intentional, I guess a jury will have to determine that in July. But it certainly seems like there's things that she's not saying. And it certainly seems like there's elements around what happened that she's not saying. Anyway, I hope that you guys learned something from this. She has the body language of somebody who has practiced saying certain things. And in my opinion, probably said them over and over again and was prepared to say those things. So she was able to be expressive. But as you can see, when she was asked questions or situations came up that she wasn't expecting, she shrank away a lot. Her body language became a lot less confident. And for some reason, she seemed to think that using hostility would just push her through and get her through the situation, which clearly it did not. So anyway, if you guys enjoyed watching this and you want more, Please like and subscribe so you can keep up with the latest content. As I said before, I read all of the comments. It really is awesome to have people give me suggestions. There's a lot that people have given me that I haven't done yet, but that's exactly where I came up with the suggestion to do this. So please keep commenting and let me know what you want to see. Last thing before I get finished up, I do have a course that I'm working on. If you're interested in that, there is a wait list in the description below if you'd like to fill that out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching.